Well, the white Vitretu is back and it's been to the hospital. And by that, I mean, this fan was completely broken. That one was making awful noise. So I essentially just eliminated the pole exhaust fans and I'm just running four as push intakes, which hopefully it's good enough. My plan now though, is to take this up north and use it as an off peak heater alongside another black Vitretu with eight CMP 50 HXs in it. Uh, and I believe I'm going to be running either eight 50 HXs in this, depending on if I get my other ones in time, uh, or I'll be running four BC-160s and four CMP-50 HXs. So at least for the beginning trial run, I'm going to run four of the blower BC-160s and four CMP-50s. And we'll see how that is thermally. And if the other shipment of CMPs comes in, then I'll be running blower, fan, blower, fan, blower, fan, blower, fan. But I just kind of want to get a sense for how the thermals react in this case. I did look at the temperatures on my other one, and it looks like hottest is right around here by the CPU and the PSU, and then kind of right in the middle as well. But the end right here is very, very cool. So I think blowers deal better with the heat. So I'm thinking we'll start blower, and then we'll go axial. All right, let's see if the B75 detects all this stuff. I haven't cold booted this thing yet, but uh, I do have a Wi-Fi adapter and I do have an MSAT on here. So let's see if she comes up. Mm, yep, that register is just fine. So I'm gonna assume that that's good. I'll try mining on it with some base OCs. This thing's really tippy. Um, but yeah, worst case, we'll take this up and this will be the mining setup. <sighs> now to see if the other CMPs are due in today. I'm taking off tomorrow, so <laughs> I really don't have much time to audit this. All right, the CMPs aren't due until tomorrow, so I'm gonna boot it back up with the lid on and let's check some temperatures. I am hearing one of these fans doing the little thing, so I might try to figure out which one that is and replace it ahead of time. Otherwise, I'll bring a spare fan up just in case, but Hopefully the blowers will uh, pull their weight, and get everything exhausted nicely in here. All right, the white case is all good to go, but I still have to deal with this little guy. This is one of the two bit cap cases I got when I bought the last batch of 3070s. And unfortunately this one had an ASIC power supply hacked into it. It was some pretty dodgy wiring, which I at least soldered together and used cloth electrical tape on but still not a huge fan. So luckily, BitCap was pretty good to work with actually. And all I had to do was ask for the proper alpha miner unit. So I'm gonna install that, but also we're going to be doing some mods to this. The other case that has the alpha miner, I took it apart and I resistor modded it and swapped the fan around. However, I have some little PWM controllers now, and I think, we should be able to actually control the fan speed of this without doing a voltage mod. So we'll check into that for sure. And then these big boys as well, unfortunately they run full speed. So I'm gonna have those disconnected until I can buy another set of PWM fans and put a real PWM controller in here. Cause I want these to be usable in a residential environment. But first things first, let's check out the 80 million splitters. Cause this PSU for an ASIC only has like 10 PCIe uh, connections on it. And let's get that old power supply out of there. Good God, a couple of these splitters are awfully crispy. I think I'll be throwing that one straight in the trash. Yikes. All right, well, the sketchy boy is out. And the board is looking pretty good, actually. I do really like the fact that these use dual channel memory. Obviously only one channel is populated, but it's really cool that this board has stacked memory channels. Cooler actually looks pretty okay. I'm guessing this is a G3900. But yeah, I'm gonna pull out the SSD, flash it for sure, and then yank these fans out too. I'm never ever gonna use fans running at full speed. But uh, then we'll jam in the better power supply and take it from there. All right, all the fans are out. Next up is yanking the MSATA. So we gotta flash that. These do usually still have a Hive OS installation on them and in fact, I should try just writing a new config to it. That might work, but I don't really want it mining to bit cap. So that's got to come out. Oops, butterfingers, 64 gig. 
Honda. No, oh, man, even original to the motherboard. Look at that. So I guess we'll flash that out real quick. Let's see what's what. This took more troubleshooting than I care to admit, but I soldered the blue wire on this fan that they cut off and left there into that pin on the PWM controller. And now Now it works. Cool. So I tried a bunch of different fans. The two pin stuff just doesn't really work. These $10 Nerd Gears fans do seem to work. So I guess I'll probably just order three more of those because they're nice and cheap. But everything seems to boot just fine, Modi. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Everything seems to boot just fine, so I'm pretty happy about that. We've got 12 pigtails left for cards, and most of these are populated. You don't need everything, luckily, but... Man, quieting down this PSU is numero uno. It's actually going to be kind of a nice case when I'm all done, so... Pretty happy about that. Well, everything went pretty well. I ended up moving the rig that's been up here for the last six months just outside the door and then moving the one I just brought up with the BC-160s and the CMPs just inside. This seems to work just fine. I'm now leveraging both of the outlets on this 220-volt, uh, 20-amp outlet. I put in another view in this panel to keep track of power usage in the rest of the house. And the other rig is doing pretty well just sitting over here too. I'm noticing we're right on the edge of Wi-Fi reception, so I actually had to push the antenna outward <laughs> to get the thing to link up and accept shares, but this is pulling about 900 watts on 120, and it's doing pretty well. So pretty good. Smart plug's at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. 75 degree exhaust. And yeah, it's cold down here, 56, 55 on the floor. And this bad boy, 120 in the output. PSU is actually a little colder, that's pretty great. And 71 intake. Oh, not bad, actually. We can probably cut the fan speed down a little bit on this. Seventy-five, that's reasonable. Ninety degrees on the smart plug, that's the hottest thing I've seen so far. Well, we are back home, and now... I have to make sure that these are okay, and then I want to test out this Octominer as well. These cards, 12 CMP 50HX MSI blowers in a HP era Octominer X12 Ultra. Now this is how you package and ship a server case. Packaging between every card, I love it. I also really love to see the fact that these have had the fans replaced already, which is great news. Straight cable means pretty sure good so happy about that that explains why the fans are only held in with oh my goodness oh gosh we'll have to take a look at this two screws per fan which is a little ghetto but not too bad otherwise all right so we're booting up taking a look at the um manufactured date of these uh fans let me open up Hive here and make sure this thing boots in. All right, I got it to behave. Somebody had actually plugged in this fan in the wrong slot. This controller has all the headers populated, which is really cool, but apparently some of them don't control fan speed, potentially. Um, I have removed all the screws on the back of the CMPs because I'm going to be pulling these out and putting them in a different case for testing, but I've just pushed one zero minor. Dynex 1440 core clock, 300 core offset, 5000 memory to these, and I'm going to compare the bin with everyone else in this group by. So, 
Let's do that real quick, then I'm gonna shut this down and I'm gonna throw these CMPs in that case, and we're gonna try this all again. But so far, the case is okay. Um, the fan screws are the wrong size, the grills did get bent up, but not terrible. Well, they all work, they all mine, and the hash rate's pretty consistent. So I guess now let me shut it down and throw all these cards in the old Octominer. Let's see if that thing works. Oh man, I started putting cards in this and I realized it doesn't have a SATA SSD. Oh man, I gotta go find a different boot drive. Uh, but anyway, this is what the B250 D310P V1.02 looks like. The spacing actually isn't that tight. These things are very similar, I guess, in spacing to the newer X12s. And it's still B250, which is great. So I'm not really sure, but so far, actually impressed. Well, first things first, this is just an oddball piece. So it's got these main strands with triple eight pins. And then each one has a zip tied six to double eight splitter on it as well. So one strand, two CMPs. There's also very little 12 volt going into the actual back plane on the motherboard. So mm, that sketches me out just a little bit for the power consumption of these things. Uh, I don't know. You can see the manual fan speed controller right there. It's got the 2U style power supply, of course, with the fan sucking the wrong direction. Oh, those are, uh... oh my gosh, if those are momentary, those things are grunchy. Uh, and then these are 120 millimeter Ventus fans. You can see the details right there. But anyway, let me run inside, get a boot drive, and then let's see if this thing works. What a comedy of errors. I had a USB drive, but uh, Oh, it's actually not bad. And the fan is blowing the right way. Okay, good. Um, what was I saying? Okay, I had to use a USB writer thing, the thing that I actually used to write my Hive OS drives to boot this, but let's see if they come up. It should. I don't know, it booted right up. Well, it turned right on, I should say. We'll see. I'm happy the fan controller works. I'm less worried about these because they're 120 millimeter, but uh, I don't know. Well, that's pretty cool. B250 OEM <laughs> 2020. So this BIOS version is over a year earlier than the uh, regular Octominer. However, it has a Core i3 in it, so that's kind of nice. A little bit better than the G3930 we typically see. It is showing all of the GPUs, so I guess let's try mining with it and see what happens. We were noticing it says 2200 watts, but it also says 2000 watts at 220, 1600 on 110. So yeah, sustained mining, I don't know guys. I think 2200 watts is maybe not what you should have <laughs> advertised. Nah, but these are mining. We're pulling about 1500 watts right now on 240 and everything's okay so far. So a few things of note, I found that it says 4520. So these actually are not that old. They don't predate the X12 Ultra Plus by very much. Those have some gaming RAM in it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure you could power this with EPS, PCIe, or PCIe down here. I do think that this motherboard is probably compatible with the newer X12 Ultra Plus. It does have a spare fan header right there, which is pretty cool. It does have a power button right there. The fan controller itself, is just an off the shelf uh, voltage variation control piece. Looks like from Alibaba and it's got Velcro that sticks it to the bottom of the case. That's fine, uh, but it is worth noting that it only uses two pins on the actual fan connector. So I don't know about that. Cooler stuff that I wish they had actually kept. You can pull the fan modules out of this case without doing anything else to it and replacing them Typically these are on the inside, but somebody was clearly running some really thick cards in this. So they had to move them to the outside. The other ones we got, the fans were on the inside. The back plane, again, looks like it probably is compatible. And I'm guessing the Rev 5 that we see on the newer ones is uh, 
you know, just a, a fifth revision of this. This one's pretty gouged to hell, hasn't been treated very well. All the 3.3 volt conversion stuff is right there. Full speed fan headers all in place as well. We have the front panel IO, just like the regular Octominer, front USB, just like the regular Octominer. This does not have any sort of Octominer tools in Hive OS. However, it would be very, very easy if you go back and look at one of my other videos from last month, it'd be very easy to put in an Octominer controller to control the fans on this and to do the remote power cycling. So I probably will end up putting a fan controller from the later X12 Ultra Plus into this. Uh, excuse me. Not sure why, but there's Molex on the front of this as well as PCIe in and out. I think they were just leaving their options really open when they made this. Back to the PSU, this is the exact same thing. It's even made by the same Shenzhen Success Company Limited as like the Vitretus. Obviously it was custom ordered to have triples on every one, but I don't know, man. For the price we paid for these cases, they're pretty good. And the Octominer DNA is definitely here. There are certain things that aren't as good. Obviously it doesn't come with a fan controller. The PSU is not redundant and it does limit you a little bit. Because if you can only pull 2,000 watts out of this, you're not going to be running CMPs on Kapow or anything like that. You're going to be running 3070s on, you know, Nexa or Radiant or something like that to keep this thing in check. So that's probably the weak link. Um, the power supplies did get a lot better in the later Octominers that everyone's familiar with. But the fans are really nice. Board's nice. Again, it has an even better CPU than the later ones, which is kind of hilarious. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this piece of history it's kind of wild it looks like this had cmps in it as well <laughs> funny 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 anyway that's that the old octominer is back to its owner from being on loan i do have a couple on order hopefully fingers crossed just to mess around with a little bit more but i have my newer x12 ultra and I've thrown the CMPs back in here. Yesterday, however, I was having a lot of issues. Uh, I would boot up this case. It would boot into Hive just fine with my boot USB drive or my SSD. However, as soon as I issued any command within Linux, that was self-upgrade, it was downloading a new miner, anything outside of just very basic Octofan configurations, the system would hang. So I, would, I was able to get it mining on Flux yesterday. But after two hours, it hung as well, and it just went full speed on the fans here, and it was unresponsive. What I'm noticing is this has four gigabytes of RAM, and it should have eight. So I'm actually going to shut it back down right now and put another eight gigs of RAM in it for a total of 12. And then I'm going to fire it back up and see if I can get it to misbehave. And I do still think the controller is probably bad on this as well, because when you shut it down, the system does shut down, but the fans go to 100%. And as you guys saw in my fan controller video, that is all handled in this little board right here. And I do have the one from my test bench with me. So I may very well end up swapping that out as well, just to see if that is our issue. Um, but yeah, first things first, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to pull the first simp out of here. And I'm going to put a uh, another RAM dim in there. And let's see if that makes it any less unstable. So the clearances in here aren't very good, but I do know that the sticker on my RAM will face the CPU. So I'm gonna get it positioned in there with one hand buried way down in here, and then the other holding on to the actual clip right there. I am noticing that there are a lot of missing screws on this motherboard, so I do wonder if it potentially had some issues in the past, and they're just sort of being covered up. I do have another CPU with me as well, but I'm not gonna swap that out unless I really think that's the issue. But let's throw some RAM in that slot. All right, the RAM is installed. Let's boot her up. And what's awesome, the RAM is recognized. Before, we were getting under one gigabyte free, which is no good. So let's hop up here, get into Shell, and let's see what happens. Well, it appears that we are mining, which is good. Yep, and fired up pretty nicely too. So let's uh, we'll let it run for a few hours just to make sure it's good there. Then I want to try unplugging the controller that's in there and doing a wake alarm to see if that works properly. And if it does, then I'm gonna try a wake alarm with the newer controller. I did hear from Octominer that the controller that I tested for you guys on video is actually a hardware revision newer than this one. So I, do, I, I, don't, I don't know, sorry, if it's just firmware or if there's actually a difference in the board. Uh, I was told by somebody 
that's heavy into MMPOS that there is actually a firmware update for the Octominer controller, but I don't know where that is or how to access it. So anyway, it is mining Dynex right now, which is what I want on CMP50s at the moment. So yeah, like I said, we'll give it some time, but at least we are not running low on memory anymore, which I really like to see. All right, everything is working perfectly. I can even wake alarm the rig. However, when it's off or it's sleeping or waiting for the wake alarm, these chassis fans still run at 100%. So what I'm gonna do is swap out the controller and let's see if that fixes this. Well, it looks exactly the same, except for all of the fan headers are populated on this one, and they're not on the other, so. Let's go ahead and swap a Rooney, see what we get. So, new controller, all just fine, with one exception. The little CMOS thing, the little plastic thing stayed on the board, unfortunately. So, I just splayed the pins a little bit, making sure they're not touching, but everything should still be okay there. All right, new controller's in, we're booting. Let's see. Annoyingly, that did not change a thing. Damn it. So I don't know if it's the motherboard or if it's the backplane now. I do have a spare one of these in stock, but I do not have a spare motherboard, so... Maybe I just acknowledge the fact that this Oct Octominer has to stay on or I have to use a smart plug on it. Not really ideal, it's a bummer. It does still wake alarm, but these fans will not turn off. 